Good afternoon, class. We want to look at project evaluation once again. The last time we met, we were looking at the how the importance of my business and other things. But today, we want to look at capacity production planning. Capacity production planning is very important, very essential because it helps an organization to be able to expand in terms of meeting up with the um, challenges of their employees' demand. I mean, their uh, customers' demand. What is capacity planning? Capacity planning is the process of determining the production capacity needed by an organization to meet to meet changing demand uh, demand for its product. When uh, when an organization when they are producing, they need to move on with the level of demand by their um, employees by their customers. So they need to move and they don't just start producing the same level of production. They need to make some changes so they're able to meet up with the demand of their products by their customers. So it's very important. The effective capacity in the maximum amount of work that an organization is capable of completing is given is a given period due to the constraints such as quality product problems, delays, materials handling, and etc. Because they are the comp the production company or production um, organization. They are very, very, um, they are having some co uh, problems in meeting up with the level of their customers' demand. So therefore, they need to make adequate planning so they are able to meet up with this. So in order to do that, there are a lot of things they need to look at before they can do that. Hello, I'm having issue. <laughs> I think it's cool. It's sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe I should just use it directly. Sorry. Okay. Let me just use it directly. Since it's, I just point, give me the sketch. What's. Continue from where you stop. We would edit it. Okay. All right, as I was saying, how to increase capacity? We have so many ways we can increase capacity because we're looking at how an employee, uh, organization can tend to increase in terms of their production, their products, to increase the level of their products so as to be able to meet all the customers' demand. Because if customers, they don't have this, it becomes a problem because when they come to the organization and demand for some uh, some quantity of commodity and it's not available, the company or the organization, they are, they are losing their uh, goodwill. And that is not good enough for any organization. So therefore, they need to make adequate planning to meet up with the level of demand of their product so that their product will be accessible to the uh, customers. Be with that... The accessibility of their product to the customer will determine the level of progress in their uh, organization. So how to increase the capacity? They increase the capacity. Number one, introduction of new techniques is very important. They can increase the new techniques of production by discovering the best method. They can increase their capacity. It's very important to discover, to do this because as doing this, they will be able to, our focus in economics is majorly to, to be able to have the best method of production, not just the quality, but to have the best method of production is very important in economics. And to do this, they also need to know how to have the best techniques of production. I think the best technique of production will help them to be able to increase their capacity. Also, it can also increase by looking at the equipment and materials. The equipment and materials need to be updated. They need to include, improve in their equi equipment by getting the modern, tech, modern equipment and also the materials. They need to improve. If you want to increase the capacity, they need to be able to increase their level of improvement because they are variable, they are variable uh, uh, materials. We go with level of production. If you want to increase output, we need to also increase input. The other one is increasing the number of workers or machines. The number of workers is also needed to be increased because if we are trying to increase the number of outputs, we also need to increase the input as well. 
But remember, in economics, not just necessarily because at times we can increase input and output may not go along in the same level of increase. So therefore, we need to use the best method. We need to use skills so that we're able to have the, the level of input to we commensurate with the level of output. The other one is increasing the number of shifts. We can have many shifts in the sense that if we have many shifts, even running at night will help us to be able to increase the number of outputs so that we'll be able to meet up with the customer demand. This is another method we can also use to increase the capacity. And lastly, we can have acquire we can have also have acquiring additional um, uh, production facilities in terms of other facilities that will help us to be able to achieve the organizational objective, which are uh, in terms of um, output uh, maximization. So when all these things are put in place, it will be F for us to be able to increase our capacity or okay, our capacity by meter with the customer's demand. Then there are some strategies of capacity planning. How do we plan? How do we meet up with all these customers' demand? We can make adequate plans by doing this. It's not when we at times it's not necessarily we have to wait till we uh, uh, we need all these things before we make adequate plan. We can plan ahead and do this. So we have a different types of planning. The first one you call it lead planning, lead strategy. It's a strategy. Okay, it's a strategy whereby we tend to okay, it's a strategy we can plan ahead, which we call lead strategy. This strategy can help us to be able to plan, not waiting for when the, uh, the, 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 the demand is needed, but we can make adequate plans ahead so that we're able to have this before hand. Okay? Lead planning is addition, adding capacity and aspiration of an increase in demand. When we have, because there's something we call forecasting in economics, when we, we can tend to forecast based on what we put on ground, then we can decide to forecast and say that, okay, maybe in the next few months, we have increase in demand for our product. Then from there, we can start making adequate planning now. Okay, based on what we have on ground, we can forecast what will happen next that because of this, because of that, maybe we are planning to reduce the cost. I mean, our, we are trying to reduce our price. So if reducing our price will lead to increase in demand for our product. So based on this, we can have beforehand, we can have adequate planning in place so that we'll be able to increase the number of product before the time even arises. So that's one thing, we, that's what we call lead strategies. Another one is what we call lag strategy, lag strategy. The lag strategy refers to adding capacity only after the operation is running at full capacity or beyond due to increase in demand. This is what this is telling us that if um, we have uh, if we are trying to increase the the demand we need to we need we need to increase our demand based on what we have on ground as in when the customers are we, we've exhausted all the production uh, um, 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 uh, material we have in the store if we exhaust all the goods we have in the store we need to make immediate plans so that we're able to increase the number of apps so that we're able to satisfy our customer now now we also have much strategy my strategy is adding capacity in small amounts in response to changing demand in the market. This one is not just waiting till we need all these things. We can start increasing our capacity gradually until as the, as the demand, as demand is increasing, we are already increasing the capacity, increasing the production. So by increasing the production, we will not have a sudden um, change in, uh, in in our production since we are already making adequate plan gradually we'll be planning gradually how to increase this capacity so by having that we'll be able to meet up with the demand for the customers and lastly adjustment strategy is adding or reducing capacity in small or large amount due to customers demand this is also similar to this thing so now we have what we call list strategy the large strategy the match strategy and adjustment strategy all are aiming at meeting the customer's satisfaction because if we are not able to satisfy our customer, we are failed. So we need to be able to make adequate strategies to be able to increase our capacity so that we meet up with the customer demand because if we are not able to meet up, it becomes a problem because it means our products are not accessible to them. And one of the rational objectives is to make sure that our products are accessible to the customer. By doing that, they will be able to have 
the full satisfaction because on the uh, major objective is also to satisfy our customers and in satisfying them it means we are building our goodwill as an organization and it will help us not only to maximize our profit but it also help us to build an international relationship so that's one of the things we also look at they also look at production planning because when we are trying to uh, uh, increase our capacity we need to make adequate planning okay production planning or production schedule is a term that covers all aspects of operations that is from the starting point to the uh, distribution point because our task is not ending until the goods get to the final consumers so when the goods get to the current final consumer that is where we are at rest that's where we are happy okay so the production planning it covers the aspect of production even when we are planning the material to the goods get to the final consumers so it's our concern many from to be able to know how to make adequate arrangement adequate planning okay so the adequate strategies put everything in place so that our goods can get to the final consumers at the right time then we have types of production planning the first one we have static planning when we say static it means something that is constant okay static planning carries an assumption that all steps in a process can be defined and will not change when we assume that everything we are uh, assuming or we, 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 we are aiming at doing everything is static we assume that nothing will change so if we put this if we increase production by 20 percent we expect output to increase by 20 percent that is our assumption okay so this kind of thing is static planning the moment we increase production by 20 percent we expect output input to increase by 20 percent we expect output to also increase by 20 percent all things being equal okay that's set of variables so with that there's no problem but we can also have the other way around that which is dynamic planning because it's not everything we plan, everything does not go the same good direction. There are some things, there are some variables that may likely dynamic in nature. So dynamic planning assumes that steps in the process will change. So nothing is planned until the demand is received. So it's difficult, when we have some kind of dynamic uh, planning, it's difficult to make a fourth, uh, a fourth plan because there are some variables that may likely change so we may not be able to even make this planning ahead of time but we have to wait for the variables to change first before we can embark on production process so that is the different the different now you are looking at the static planning and dynamic planning Plan, static planning is more reliable because all things being equal the moment we have this we plan this increase production by 20 percent we have up to by 20 percent but the dynamic planning is not so because some variables are not um are not always static they tend to change over time so because of that so we, we cannot have a moderate plan in terms of dynamic planning so all these are very important for us to plan to be able to meet up with the organizational objective and so we want to look at likely we look at the importance of planning of planning this so that be able to meet up with what we intend to do. The first one of importance of planning is that it helps in the identification of business tasks. Okay, when we, of course, planning, they said a man that failed to plan is planning to fail. So therefore, planning is very important. Not only in our organization, but every aspect of life. Okay, if it helps to identify the business task, because when we plan, we know what is ahead of us. So it's very, very important for us to plan. Very, very important, especially when it comes to organization work, we have to meet up with the customer's demand. And meeting up with the customer demand is one of the organizational objectives. If we are not able to meet up, then we have failed. Okay? Not only in terms of profit maximization, but in terms of every aspect of life. And our goodwill, which is the reputation, is going down the road. So it's very important for us to know the task ahead. Number two, it helps to keep cost down. You know, our focus in economics is that to be able to maximize profit. And for us to maximize profit, we need to minimize cost. There's no way we maximize profit without minimizing cost. And how do we minimize cost? It's when we plan ahead. If we plan our production process adequately, we'll be able to minimize our cost. And minimizing cost will help us to be able to maximize our profit. And profit is one of the major uh, objectives of an organization. So we achieve that by keeping down our cost, so which can be achieved by adequate planning. Then another one is planning helps to provide solution to some challenges. Yes, when we plan ahead, of course, they said, when we plan ahead, we'll be able to even foresee some problems. 
and the problem identified is half solved. So when we plan, we will have solution at hand. Yes, when we have solution at hand, even when the problem comes, it's no longer a problem. This is one of the things we do in uh, setting up a business plan. Okay, when we have a business plan on anything, we discover that part of the business plan is to identify some foreseen problem. Okay, so when we have that, we will be able to have solution at hand. So when the, even when the problem comes, we already know what to do. Okay, as a result of that, it's a problem that I already have a solution. It's no longer a problem because we planned ahead and we have solution to this problem. So even when it comes, it's no longer a problem because we already know what to do. So that's one of the things that plan, planning does. And lastly, planning helps to provide insight analysis to issues that may arise. Yes, because we already know what to do. Even when any issue comes up, we know what to do. Then we just move on. That is why planning is one of the things that keep us going in life. In every area of life, even in terms of production process, we know what to do, we know the task ahead, we know what to do. So when we have everything to do, then it's just for us to move on. Nothing, absolutely nothing will stop the progress of production because we have everything before our hand. Thank you.